KLEW News starts now. Authorities arrested a Lewiston man who failed to show up during his trial for which he was charged with the distribution of methamphetamine. That's our top story tonight at 11. Good evening, I'm Nate Custer. And I'm Morgan Aguilar. Thanks for joining us. An Idaho State Police narcotics detective tells KLEW News that 40-year-old Brian Pratt had several had a warrant out for several months, but thanks to tips from local residents, they were able to make a traffic stop and arrest him on US 95 near Genesee on Monday evening. Pratt was on trial in March for selling methamphetamine and carrying a pound of meth before his disappearance. He currently is being held in the Nez Perce County Jail without bond. Whitman County Sheriff's deputies arrested a registered sex offender for molesting a 12-year-old child. 23-year-old Joshua Forbes of Lamont was arrested on a charge of first-degree child molestation Friday afternoon. He allegedly had sexual contact with a 12-year-old twice in May, and he was previously convicted for possession of child pornography in 2009. He's currently being held at the Whitman County Jail on a $250,000 bond. And we have new information tonight on a story we've been following for you. The bail amount will not be lowered for a man charged with multiple counts of sexual exploitation of a child. An arraignment hearing was held for 53-year-old Daniel, Daniel Scroggins, who's charged with 10 counts of sexual exploitation of a child. At the hearing earlier today, the defense asked the court for reduction of the bond based on Scroggins' prior volunteer work, 14 years of military service, and ties to the community. However, the judge ruled against that motion. So based on the seriousness of the charges uh, contained in the information and also the background that the state has pointed out, I think the uh, bond set of $25,000 is a reasonable amount and it will remain at that amount. Scroggins bail was previously reduced by $25,000 back in May. If convicted, Scroggins faces a maximum penalty of 30 years and or a $50,000 fine for each count. He'll next appear in court on July 2nd. Well, the new indigent defense requirements in Asotan County will not take effect until this fall. However, they're already becoming a hot topic for everyone. Our Sophia Moralio takes us full circle on the issue that recently emerged at a town hall meeting held in Asotan County last week. A mandate from the Washington State Supreme Court will soon dictate the amount of cases a public defender can take. It takes 1.85 felony cases to equal one dependency case. The new government mandate states that public defenders can only represent 150 felony equivalencies, which is equal to 80 dependencies. And according to Soton County Public Defender Jane Richards, the dependency cases are really adding up. We have more dependency cases now than we had in all of last year, and we're only halfway through. The year. This means that if crime continues to climb in Asotan County, the commission will be forced to hire another attorney and come up with the funds for that additional salary. At the Asotan County Town Hall meeting last week, both the commission and constituents expressed their views around unfunded government measures. My question is, is that when it gets to the point that there's not a dime left in the treasury for you to do that with, I mean, what can you do? I mean, there's no oath left to keep if you ha if you can't afford to pay for it. Supreme Court tried to get the legislature to change the standards, and the legislature would not do it. So the Supreme Court is kind of like the EPA; they're 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 trying to rule by by regulation. Richards is one of two public defenders for the Asotan County Superior Court and feels that the commission should hire a third public defender regardless. Then you never have to worry about getting over those standards. I know that I'm not over them now. I will be by probably October. Richards says it's too early to tell how the mandate will work, but says the idea behind the system is solid. I think what the Supreme Court is really wanting is there to be as many public defenders as there are prosecutors. Reporting in Asotan County, Sophia Morales. Leo Kelly, W News. In a commission meeting on Monday, a Soton County prosecutor, Ben Nichols, said about 98% of a Soton County felony cases are granted public defenders and often awarded without much review. And we continue our coverage of that topic tonight as the Soton County Commission approved a request by the county prosecutor to contract an outside attorney in a move aimed to restructure the heavy workload of the office. A Soton County prosecutor Ben Nichols requested $65,000 to hire an attorney to handle a portion of the office's felony cases over the next year. Nichols says he can then focus on child dependency cases which have historically been covered by the Department of Social and Health Services. It would be a flat payment. Uh, stretched out over the 12 months and it would be strictly tied to that contract. 
so that if we didn't get the contract again next year, the position would die. Nichols says that should the county choose not to renew the contract, the position would then be eliminated. He says they're working to cut down the case lengths to minimize caseload as well. In other local news, Valley Vision says unemployment here in the LC Valley is down to 5.5% between Asotin and Nez Perce, Nez Perce counties since May. Valley Vision Executive Director Doug Mattoon gave the Asoni, Asotin County Commission a program update explaining the goals of the privately owned economic development agency. Mattoon says the unemployment rate has always been higher than the national average, but since May of 2004, that hasn't been the case. Some of that has to be just because of our activities uh, on a valley-wide basis to work on, on workforce development. Valley Vision is also focused on efforts to improve business retention and recruitment. Members of the organization recently returned from Sweden, where they met with distributors who are interested in the shallow water vessels manufactured here in the valley. A concerned Moscow citizen addressed the city council for the second time Monday night to express his belief that the city's paramedics should be paid. And Palouse reporter Rachel Dubrovin explains why he says the city's volunteer emergency response system is a threat to public safety and what the city is doing to address his concern. Moscow's ambulance company is a segment of the city's volunteer fire department. It's composed of about 40 emergency medical personnel and five of them are trained paramedics. I'm a concerned citizen because I think that uh, one of the things that we have around here in, in the city is a shortage of EMS personnel. Troy Zachariasen is one of the city's paramedics and in late May he stood before the city council as a concerned resident who believes the EMS personnel, particularly the paramedics, should be paid. Some of those paramedics are looking at other options, uh, other paid options. Zachariasen says that having a volunteer fire department benefits the city because they qualify for more grant money that allows them to purchase top of the line equipment. But what good is this equipment if we do not have the personnel around to use it? who are trained to use it. He says the city council should find a way to pay the paramedics. I've got $10,000 in two years into my schooling to become a paramedic. Um, that's a lot of time, that's a lot of commitment, and to not be reimbursed for it is a frustrating thing. Zacharyson spoke up again in Monday night's council meeting. Do the citizens even know that this is a, a concern, that they can dial 911? and not get the care that they think that they are getting. Mayor Nancy Cheney says the city recently hired two paid EMS personnel to fill in while the student volunteers are away for the summer. But when it comes to paying paramedics, she says it's a matter of finding funding and partnerships. We share your interest in having a safe uh, response team as we possibly can. Um, you know, the city of Moscow probably can't do it alone. In Moscow, Rachel DeBroven, KLEW News. Thank you, Rachel. Well, the Moscow Volunteer Fire Department was established more than 100 years ago, and their ambulance service averages more than 1,000 calls each year. Well, you've no doubt noticed that we have a new face here on the KLEW News team here on the desk, and beside me is our new anchor producer. She's a Northwesterner and has spent much of her life here in the inland Northwest region. Though she's new to the LC Valley, Palouse, and Prairie, she's no stranger to our neck of the woods. It's my pleasure to introduce you to Morgan Aguilar. Thank you so much, Nate. That's right. I'm a very proud Idahoan, so I grew up just two hours north of here in the gorgeous Coeur d'Alene area. I did leave just for four years. I went to college at the University of Colorado, recent graduate, um, along with our police reporter, Rachel DeBroven. Her and I were buffs together, and I knew her in Boulder. Yep. But absolutely love it up here, and I'm really excited to be back in the Northwest and to be joining the KLEW team. All right, well, very happy to have you here, and you might have noticed it was raining outside, right? Uh, yeah, but I'm still happy to be here. It's there okay. you go. Still happy to be here despite the rain, the cooler temperatures that have come our way. We're going to find out a little bit more about that as we now check in with Sophia Moralio for our first look at weather. Sophia. You know what, guys? I do wish I had some good news to tell you, maybe some sunshine on the horizon, but unfortunately, we are looking at just more rain throughout the week. Right now we're sitting right around 58 degrees at the Lewiston in Nez Perce County Airport. Winds are coming out of the southwest at 7 miles per hour and mostly cloudy out there right now. As we take a look at the past 12 hours, we kind of saw a mixture of everything, a little bit more of cloud coverage early in the morning and a few scattered showers along the west coast of Washington and into Montana. But these showers are going to continue. Everyone's looking at about 100% chance of some precipitation throughout the night. 
As we go on now for the high temperatures, 62 in Spokane, 65 for the Palouse area. We're looking at about 72 for Yakima, 62 for the Tri-Cities, and then 73 for the Seattle area and 70 for Portland. For the regional forecast, like I said, overnight lows are going to be right around the low 40s to mid 50s in the LC Valley. Everyone though, either some scattered showers or the chance of a thunderstorm, but then tomorrow, the rain's going to keep on continuing. We are looking at high temperatures, going to be right around the low 50s to 59 in the LC Valley. Just clouds and some rain, but I'll have the full weather forecast coming up in a few, a few minutes. Nate, Morgan. All right, thank you so much, Sophia. Well, those rain showers coming up are music to the ears of local farmers, but they may also bring potentially disastrous danger with them. The reason why the showers could result in a deadly disease for area crops. And federal lawmakers strike down a very controversial bill today. Reactions from both sides of the debate. You're watching KLEW News. Covering the Northwest tonight, a new report condemns Washington State for lax oversight at the nation's most contaminated nuclear site, the Hanford Nuclear Reservation. The report says state officials failed to adequately inspect the cleanup there. The draft report by the Environmental Protection Agency faults the Washington State Department of Ecology for employing too few inspectors at South Central Washington's Hanford Nuclear Reservation. The report was released today by the Hanford watchdog group, Hanford Challenge. Lawmakers on Capitol Hill voted down a very controversial abortion bill today. Supporters of the legislation say it would have prevented fetuses from feeling pain. Opponents say it was an attempt to roll back a woman's constitutional right to an abortion. Tara Merchant reports from Washington as we cover the nation. And the bill is not passed. Republicans did not get the votes for a bill targeting abortions in Washington, D.C. The legislation would have made all abortion after 20 weeks of pregnancy illegal in the nation's capital. Arizona Republican Congressman Trent Franks sponsored the bill with support from anti-abortion rights groups. Unborn children had the capacity to experience pain by at least 20 weeks and very likely substantially earlier. Pro-abortion rights groups say there is no medical evidence to support that claim. Democratic opponents say the legislation directly challenged Roe v. Wade. It is based on radical ideology rather than on long-established Supreme Court precedent or on sound science. The vote is putting lawmakers on the record on abortion just before an election. Pro- and anti-abortion rights groups are keeping score. It's important for the Congress to vote on this bill and to get a strong majority in support of reversing the current policy in our nation's capital. The Constitution gives Congress the authority to govern what happens in the capital city, but D.C. Congresswoman Eleanor Holmes Norton says the vote had national implications. Because what happens in D.C., they will come for you next they are aiming for you. It's a national campaign. In a 2007 study, the Center for Disease Control reported no abortions were performed in Washington, D.C. after 20 weeks, despite it being legal. Tara Mergener for CBS News, Washington. And that bill needed a two-thirds majority in order to pass the House. New at 11 tonight, people on the Palouse may not be excited for the cold and windy weather that's expected over the next couple of days, but farmers are. The lower temperatures are expected to bring rain showers, which benefits the crops following the most recent dry months. However, experts say farmers should keep in mind that the combination of cold weather and rain can cause the spread of stripe rust. One thing they need to, to watch is go ahead and scout their fields, look at their fields in case there was some stripe rust already present because it may be on the increase and they may have to get treated. Stripe rust is a leaf disease that can prevent crops from photosynthesizing properly, which would result in a lower yield. However, farmers typically don't need to worry about cold weather damaging crops unless temperatures dip below freezing, which hopefully now they will not do. It's June. We want to avoid those uh, below freezing temperatures. Is that something that farmers have to worry about, Sophia? Not at all. We're going to see the rain, lots of rain that I know a lot of people are needing, but nothing below freezing as you can see on the up to the minute radar lots of clouds are kind of moving into the lc valley and i'll tell you more maybe a few chances of some thunder showers but i'll have the full weather forecast coming up but first a look at local stocks you're watching klew news
probably one of the greatest games I've seen in a long time. Normally, I just watch, you know, Lakers or UCLA basketball. But to see a game like this that featured teams I don't care about, it was great. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Matt. Appreciate that. We'll move on to our final story now. All right. Well, in the past, we have shown a car without a driver going round and round on a street, and a police officer had to jump through one of that car's windows to stop it. And now check this out. Yesterday at about 4.30 in the afternoon, just off the coast of St. Petersburg, Florida, we have a fishing boat going round and round. A Florida Fish and Wildlife official says that two men were tossed off the boat by a large wake. The Coast Guard came in and waited until the boat ran out of gas before towing it back to shore. All right, that's how it works <laughs> out, I guess. Be careful when you're on that boat, right? Uh, yeah, All I wouldn't right. want to do it. Words to live by. That's going to do it for us tonight. Thank you so much for staying up late with us this evening. Again, welcome to Morgan Aguilar. You'll see Morgan. a lot more of her. Right on, Matt. Way to take care of business. Yeah. <laughs> Before we leave, here's a look out over the night sky at the LC Valley. We'll see you back here tomorrow night. The Late Show with David Letterman. 